Beardia, you had me at beer. Today we're making them delicious ass dipping tacos, AKA Beardia. If you've never had them before, you are missing out on such a treat. And I have my fellow Funhouse of Tear, my compadre, comedian Armando Torres. Hello, hi, I'm here as uh, the closest thing that John knows to a Mexican, uh, and I'm gonna be in the official judge. Yes, yeah, we're going full food network here, which is like any ethnicity of a food, you've gotta have the, repre <laughs> you've gotta have the representative uh, the person there for it. So that's what we're doing today. Um, this is like kind of a one pot meal, but we're gonna break it down into sections because we're gonna get drunk as shit. We're gonna get drunk as mierda. There we go, there we go. And he's gonna say all the words that I can't say. Mm -hmm. Cause I've already started out saying beer dia, so uh, <laughs> let's uh, down the hatch and get to cooking. Ah, T is for tequila. Salute. Ah! Ah! Let's go. Cool. Now I, I'm probably like five shots in. I think you're just behind me. So we're gonna try our best to make any of this make sense. If it doesn't, we're gonna teach you guys the art of ordering Postmates. <laughs> That's the backup plan for today. Um, but we gotta do a little bit of prep work first because once you get all your stuff together for Beria, it, Beria I can't even say it, my American ass. Uh, Beria. Beria. Be <laughs> Beat it up. Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin, there you go. So once we get our stuff together for Bitcoin, it goes in one pot and then you just chill for three hours, which is probably gonna be the most dangerous three hours for us. But first, what I wanna do is give you just a little bit of work. We have got some peppers here, chilies here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have got some guajillo, about four of these. We've got some ancho chilies, and then we've got, uh, we got three ancho chilies, and then we've got three chipotle peppers. So all I need you to do is just take off the stem, and empty out the seeds. You can just empty them out right there because we can clean it up later. Okay. And if you need to, you can just open them up and get yeah. all that stuff out. But that is your task. I have to cut up this ginger, these two onions, and smash some garlic. John gave me this job because he thinks he has to touch his dick later. Yeah. Yeah, don't touch chilies and uh, touch yourself because it's not going to go the way that you wanted to. The more you know. Or see, we're out here teaching the kids. Some people like a little extra spice. You never know. <laughs> well, I told Armando, I was like, I can get some, uh, some habaneros, please. Yeah. And really I told him, I told him he should go for it because I can't even jerk it if I don't feel like I have chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> you want that sting. <laughs> you want that sting. So what I'm looking for here is just about two cups of just finely diced onions. And depending on the size of your onion, you may only have to use one. I have to use two. Uh, because my local market does not put growth hormone in their shit and I keep protesting about it. Give me the growth. And you'll see a lot of different um, combinations of peppers and stuff for, for Bedia. Um, this is the one I have access to. But you definitely have those chipotle peppers. That is super important. And if you cannot get your hands on, and these are all dry chilies, if you can't get your hands on dry chipotle peppers, maybe you're in Wichita, Kansas, you just don't have access to any shit that's Mexican, um, you can absolutely get the canned chipotle peppers in a double sauce, just as good. I feel like if you don't have access to this stuff, just give it up. <laughs> just move to California. You mean Taco Bell is not a great representat uh, representation? Uh, that's honestly that was my access to Mexican food. To Mexican? And then Chipotle moved in and I was like, oh, this is like better Taco Bell. <laughs> it wasn't ooh, I know you're gonna get angry. It wasn't until I moved to LA and I had tacos and the first thing I said is, where's the lettuce and the cheese? <laughs> what is this onions and cilantro? What is oh, that? Man. You're not one of those people who taste cilantro like soap, right? It's not, I guess, overwhelming enough for me to be okay. turned off from it. Or maybe I just like to eat soap and I should eat soap more. Am I mutilating this pepper? How much money do you pay me to take a, just a straight line of that? <laughs> well, I mean, are you going to do it? Because we can negotiate. We do get paid next week. All right, so I've got that onion. Nice stuff, and I wanna do this ginger thing. So last time I was working with ginger, everybody told me about the spoon trick. And I'm like, what is that? And uh, I did a little sample of it earlier today. I was like, oh wow, this really works. So with peeling ginger, literally just take a spoon and it just comes right off. Whoa. I was using a peeler the entire time. Like and for potato? Yeah, and this is so much easier. Because what I wanna do is get about a tablespoon worth of ginger here that I'm just gonna mince up. But first we gotta get this pill off. And you know, if you wanna use a pillow, mm. you still can. But the spoon just, like, it gets in those nooks and crannies really, really well. I know this is gonna sound like I'm doing a joke. I'm not. This, this pepper, 
It literally smells like my grandpa's house. Really? It's so good. It's See, sweet too. This is, that's the weird part is that this smells like, to me, this smells like sweet candy. Smell that. It does. Yeah, it's candy. It's not spicy. It's just for flavor. And it's gonna, well, now I'm sounding like a food blog. It's gonna play so well with the other flavor palettes that <laughs> we have going on. It's gonna play really well. So I've got what feels like a tablespoon worth of ginger and I just mince it up. That and then, actual garlic. We're not gonna mince these up because everything's gonna break down in this braise that we're making, our consomme. And so what I really just want is about 10 cloves of garlic here. We're just crushing the garlic today. Um, we're not going to mince it like I normally would. If I crush it, I literally just took my knife, pressed on it, and just taking it out of the paper. Again, this is gonna break down in that braising liquid. So if just like that, it's totally fine. And I've got about 10 cloves of that that I'm gonna do but one last thing that I do want to prep is just a quick sachet of seasonings. And the reason why we're going to put it in some cheesecloth, and by the way, cheesecloth, super helpful tool to have in the kitchen. It's inexpensive. You can get a roll on Amazon. Uh, for Plus it's cheap. made out of cheese, so yeah, you can eat it afterwards. Yeah, it's made out, it's, it comes from uh, the moon. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that because it's also made out of cheese. Don't Google it. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, just do it. Just trust <laughs> us. And tell all your friends that it's made of cheese. <laughs> So we've got the cheesecloth. Be prepared to, to stand your ground on that argument as well. Oh yeah, don't back down, not even <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, double down, if, if anything. Ruin uh, relationships. Yes. Get specific on what type of cheese. I go to his Limburger cheese, but sometimes it's Gouda. So we've got this, and this we're gonna kind of create uh, essentially a tea bag. Um, <laughs> you immature ass, I think mean, he's gonna laugh. We're gonna create uh, essentially um, something that's gonna be easy to fish out these herbs. So I've got some bay leaves here. I'd say maybe three bay leaves in here. I've got some cinnamon sticks. And listen, there's a lot of way to make veridia. Sometimes people just put the actual like ground up ingredients in it. But today I'm gonna go a different route, but I'm gonna put one cinnamon stick in there. Then I'm gonna say about a tablespoon worth of cloves. So we've got this in here and all I'm gonna do is just fold this over. Fold that over, kind of tuck underneath it. And there's no real right or wrong way to do it, kind of underneath. And then what I want to do is I just have some butcher's twine. Again, another helpful tool to have in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. For kidnapping. Yeah. So I'm just tying that up. Yeah, there we go. That's a little sachet. So now that the bulk of our prep work is done, that's the hardest part, uh, especially when you're intoxicated, we are going to toast. Our chilies, because we want to wake up the flavor. They've been dried and they've been sitting in packaging for God knows how long. So we're just gonna put them in just a hot cast iron pan over pretty high heat. And we just want to toast these. Now you can do this. This is really like a one pan or one pot type of meal, but I'm doing it in the cast iron just because it's easier to display it for you. Be careful because these chipotle peppers will, as Armando put it, pepper spray you. So. Yeah, they will. I've had a girl come over and try to make salsa in my house. And what she did was she created just a room of pepper spray. <laughs> and then the salsa sucked. Well, we gotta stop resisting, that's the mm -hmm. problem. <laughs> like I said, now you can see, toasted, toasted. This one still has a ways to go, but we're waking up those flavors. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna swap out this cast iron for our Dutch oven, mm -hmm. and now it is video time. I've got two pounds of beef shank, Maybe where you're at, it's called beef shin, which is the unsexiest name for meat ever. And I've got some bone-in short rib. If you can find bone-in short rib, absolutely go for it. So what we're gonna do is a very, very simple seasoning for this because we have so much flavor going on with our consomme that we don't need to go crazy with this. So Armando, grab that goddamn pepper. We're going to just pour a palm full of salt and pepper. And these meats can take it. Um, and we're just gonna hit the top of these. now. Some people use stewing beef. Some people will try to use beef chuck. The reason why I like to use beef shanks and bone-in uh, short rib, other than the fact that that's all I can get, is because that bone marrow is gonna add more flavor to our consomme, AKA soup, if you are uh, uneducated like me. What we're gonna do is sear these at a very, very high heat. So we wanna create a crust and flavor uh, not only on the meat, but actually in the pan itself. Mm -hmm. It's like finger painting, yeah. but you can eat it and the teacher won't yell at you <laughs> and call your mom. What the fuck, Mrs. Stevenson? We're gonna flip these over. Did I put too much pepper on? No, you're good. <sighs> yeah, they, they, these can take it. Okay. And we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. Don't ever be afraid to season your meat. Now, granted, there's gonna come a day where you do over season it, mm -hmm. but meats like these can take it because they're gonna braise for so long 
and some of the season is going to come off while it's searing. If anything, you just don't want to have too much. I feel like you can salvage something with too much pepper. Salt, your day's ruined. I have said Dutch oven here and I'm just going to get it on the highest heat that I can. So if you're on a stove top, medium high heat. And on top of that, we're going to use an avocado oil because as you can see, it has a high smoke point, 500 degrees. If you were to use olive oil or even like a vegetable oil, it's going to create a lot of smoke. You're going to set your smoke detectors off. So we're going to let that heat up. Uh, we're going to get some more shots because why? Yeah, why not? I know, I know, I know. It's a, it's a punishing show. It's a very punishing show. He told me what it was going to be and I still am surprised. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's going to get pretty sloppy in the next uh, three hours. So <laughs> it's already starting. It's already starting. Yeah. I have cute sneezes. <laughs> you said cute sneezes? Yeah. <laughs> You'll hear the audio when you play it back. I, I sneeze like. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I can't wait to hear that. All right, uh, let's give this a few minutes and then it's time to sear. Also, by the way, uh, I just want to point out with the meat, I did take it out and let it kind of come up the room temp for 30 minutes before we start this process. And now I do want to give it like a good 10, 15 minutes to let the salt and pepper work into it. So don't ever just take your meat straight out of the fridge and throw it into a hot pan because it's just not going to cook as evenly as if you let it sit out for a bit. So I, so I did do that. Foreplay, baby. We've got a good high heat going on here. Uh, we've got our meat has been seasoned, it's been chilling for about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes because me and Armando have been sitting here drinking and we're going to continue to drink. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Avocado oil. Just a good glug on the bottom because we're about to sear this meat. Look at that. If it doesn't make that sound, don't trust it. You don't want gray meat in your shit, dog. No. And we're going to let this go. Let me actually get this a little bit further down. We're going to let this go for about 90 seconds to two minutes. Mm -hmm. We're not cooking these through. We just want to get a good sear. And that's why it's super important to have a nice high heat on this. So. 90 seconds to two minutes. We're gonna check on it. We'll see how the color looks and we'll flip it over, get to the other side, get those out, do our beef shanks, and then the fun begins. It has been about two minutes and we're going to- Look at that. Look at oh, that. That's the color we want right beautiful. there. beautiful. You want a crust yeah. like a terrible college boyfriend. Yeah. If it doesn't look like the way your eyes are when you first wake up in the morning, <laughs> don't trust it. So we're gonna flip that over. And the reason that we're just getting a sear on it, John, is because we're trying to cook it in that uh, consomme later. But we want flavor. Mm -hmm. We want a good fond at the bottom of it. Like this could have cooked a little bit longer, but it's totally fine because it's still got the flavor. But like that one right there, oh, that's good flavor. All mm -hmm. that is fantastic flavor. And also we'll just make sure with our beef shanks that we get it nice and coated. So another two minutes. Then we'll take these out, put our beef shanks in, and then it's time to build. If I don't pass out. All right, we've got the smoke going. We finished searing all our meats. And again, we're not cooking all the way through. We just want to get some good color. And this is exactly what we want. All these mm. dark parts right here, mm -hmm. that is the flavor that is going to provide amazingness to our consomme. And again, this could have cooked longer, but it's fine. It's going to braise and break down. So we have here our fond. Fond yes. is all this stuff from leftover from the meat. And we want this flavor. So first thing we're going to do is take our onions, two cups of onions that we chopped up earlier. Actually, no, first, let's do this real quick. A little, a little bit of a lubricant. You thought I was going to pour a shot, probably. I thought you did, yeah. So I'm gonna do I'll that. take a shot of avocado <laughs> oil. What am I on, keto? So there's a little bit of avocado oil in there, just for lubricant. We're still over like a medium high heat. Look at this. He just raw dogs the onion. Hell yeah, it's going to cook. Anything on my hands is dangerous. No. It's going to die in the heat. That's the secret. That's what people don't know is that the flavor comes from like light. Yeah, like what's under my fingernails right now, mm -hmm. that's seasoning. Fingernail seasoning, that's what you want in your life. All right, our onions are in there. Look at that. And we want to soften these up. This is going to move pretty quickly. Remember that you want grilled, not caramelized onions. Yes, and then let's turn this down just a little bit more. So Same. now we're more closer to the medium versus mm -hmm. the medium high. And honestly, that's probably all I need right there. So what I want to do is throw in our garlic that we crushed. And I just chopped up very loosely. It's going to break down in that braising liquid. And our ginger. 
Look at that. Oh, it smells so good in here. I'm regretting not eating <laughs> so much. <laughs> but once it becomes fragrant, what we want to do real quick is just kind of deglaze this pan. I'm going to do three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So once you begin smelling that ginger, that garlic, and of course mm. those onions. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> Again, all this, that fawn, these little black parts, we want to lift that up. So we're going to deglaze it with some apple cider vinegar. And once you've got that in there, start scraping away. So you see now our, the bottom of our Dutch oven doesn't have those spots. Mm. The spots can kind of incorporate into it. So what I want to do right real quick is just let that cook just for a little bit. This is not going to take long, just for a little bit so that apple cider vinegar can kind of cook off. But it's also going to add some bite. Let me make sure, yeah, a 28 ounce can of peeled whole tomatoes. Uh, you can use fire roasted tomatoes if you want to, but this is just what I had access to, but we can still break this down. I thought he was saying like the year, like it was a fancy wine. <laughs> what we've got here is 2019 Some aged tomatoes. tomatoes. So those you can come in here because these come out whole, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is just take my spatula and just break them down. Oop, that's the spillage. That's okay, you got a little bit of juice. Juice. That's how you know we're making the Dojo Cat of Birria. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you got me so drunk I mispronounced birria. <laughs> you saying it very American-alike. Mm -hmm. the, ta the tacos with the au jus. The, yeah. yeah. The French dip the, tacos. Can I get the French dip tacos? <laughs> All right, so let's just give it a second to simmer and kind of come together. Our sauce, our tomato sauce has been uh, saucing away. So first, what I want to do is get some seasonings in here. So I've just got just some taco seasoning. This good old-fashioned American taco seasoning. Premium. <laughs> Premium. So we're gonna do one fourth cup of that in here. I've got some smoked paprika. That's, paprika. That's not how you say it. That's how you say it. About one fourth cup. I have this little small container here, which should be about that. I'm gonna pour the entire thing in here. Ooh! Do you see him just like fucking no cap raw dog in these seasons right now? Yeah. This is pure improv. And this is for you. This is Mexican oregano from where? Wichita, Kansas, that's right. All this right. shit looks like straight bud. It does. By the way. It does. We got one fourth cup of that as well that we're gonna pour in. And then I want to not spill that. Let's give this a mix real quick. Get all our seasonings and infused together. All right, now that we have that in, what I wanna do is I have some beef broth here that I've had just sitting at room temperature. If you wanna warm this up just to make things faster, you mm -hmm. can. But I'm just gonna pour four quarts. It's not four quarts, that's not the word. Two quarts. I'm gonna pour, <laughs> Lewis is laughing at me. I'm gonna pour two quarts of beef broth in here. And that's gonna uh, sort of just like thin up your sauce. And you see what he's doing here? Pouring the sauce on the side to get a little bit of that, uh, that stuff that's stuck to the, to the Dutch oven off of it. Oh, look yeah. at that. Ooh. Look at that, look at that technique. Our sachet from earlier with the bay leaf, the cinnamon, and the uh, cloves goes in here. And our chilies from earlier go in here as well because we want to rehydrate these. So remember how many you're using. I use three chipotle peppers, mm -hmm. four guajillos, three ancho chilies. So remember that because you need to fish those out later to create our uh, chili paste. And you the don't way want to you, leave anything in there. The way you can remember that is three, four, three, like halo, I think. Am I right? Is that a halo thing? That's who makes halo? Okay. Like three, four, three. Damn, hell yeah, I'm a gamer now. Once it comes to a server, we're going to put the lid on and then we're gonna give it 20 minutes. That's gonna allow the chilies to rehydrate. And then from there, we'll take it into our blender, back in here, put our meats in, and then it just goes into the oven. And now that's gonna make things worse because we have to continue drinking. drinking. Yeah. To Beria. To Beria. God damn it. Salute. See Beria. You're both making me very mad. All right, so our chilies have oh. been Steeping away, rehydrating. So what I want to do is grab our chilies. And remember the number that you put in here. Three, four, three. Three, four, three. And it's okay if you grab some of the other stuff. It's totally fine. It's just, just gonna get chopped up. Yeah, just don't grab the sachet because you don't want to eat cheesecloth. Although you know you that do. gouda and that Limburger cheese is gonna be great. You do. Don't don't Google it. Yeah. Just eat it. Yeah. So I'm gonna take some of this broth and just ladle it in here because we want to process that down. But this is an important stage. Uh, this is what I wanted to tell you, my biggest, darkest secret that I have. Go for it. Is that... Uh,
and then I did a racism. All right, let's get this nice and uh, grind it up. It's possible that you may need to add more broth. You kind of have to fill it out. Yeah, we need a little bit more in here. Smells amazing. But I do want to add some more stuff to it. So I'm gonna take another ladle full of mm -hmm. liquid. And also, you don't have to do, oh, spilling everything. You don't have to do that. You can do water as well. You could, but you would be wrong. The important thing is just having this smooth. You can do this in a food processor. Um, it's totally fine. You just want to have something that can get this nice and smooth. But this is a very important part of the entire process. This <laughs> model walks around <laughs> contemplating what I just said. So I'm smelling it. I like it. This part right here represents how your beard is going to taste. So it's good, but it needs more. One thing it needs is just some salt for sure. Then we're going to add some cinnamon. You will all be very surprised how much cinnamon is in your Mexican food. Yeah, you just want a little bit of sweet to counteract the savory. Yes, and then some allspice as well because we have all cultures here. That's every one of the spices. We're going to blend that. And you'll have to play around with this a bunch. So do not feel bad if you have to do this a few times. You want to try it? I would love to. I think I want to add some chili powder and a little bit more cinnamon. You were saying this off camera. You may have said it on camera too, but this is basically what your bedia is going to taste like. Yeah. So this is where you want to like really play around with the flavors. I think I could put some chili powder in there. Mm, I think controversial. I think a little bit more salt, a little bit more chili powder. I'm down. Mm. I'm down. Fuck it, let's go for it. And this doesn't hurt because obviously we have the uh, the chilies in here that we want to make sure are getting broken down to a smooth paste. You don't want to have just like a solid bite of a chili because chilies can be bitter. Even when they smell great and have amazing flavor, they can be very, very, very bitter. Oh, mmm. And we still have the meat and, and like the sachet and everything going on, so like, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Shit. Right. Woo. So what we're gonna do is take this. So also what I've done is I have preheated my oven up to 350 degrees. So we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna pour our chili paste back in. Look at that. And we're gonna put a little bit of water in here uh, mm -hmm. to get the rest of it out, but also just to kind of cover up everything. So we're gonna take our meat, nestle it in there. I wanna make sure that that is completely covered. Yes. Yeah, it's like being a kid and sleeping. If you leave a single piece of you out, the monsters will get you. All right, so all our meat is back in there. And let me just add a little bit of water to this because I want to make sure we're getting all this flavor. Oh, man. My brain is breaking down and all I can think about is how delicious it is to eat and how lucky you are that you get to watch this as like a, what, 10, 15 minute process? Yeah, when this is, is the entire day because we're going to get drunker. I showed up at 10 in the morning. I haven't eaten anything and then he fed me spaghetti just so that I could keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's a good system. It's going into the oven, 350 degrees for the next three hours. Everything's going to break down. Now, over those three hours, Maybe once every hour, just check on it and see, does it need more liquid? Always make sure your meat is submerged because this is the braising process. Real quick, because I didn't show it. Again, off this, into the oven. 350 degrees. And make sure you use oven mitts. Yes. And timer is set for three hours. And that's that. All right, so really, the process is simple, just take your meat, and it's already probably falling apart. I have a cleaver here. You don't have to have a cleaver. You can just use a regular chef knife. But well, you should have a cleaver. You should have a cleaver. You should have a cleaver. You're gonna go through a breakup bad one day. Where there's bone, don't cut it. Otherwise, take your cleaver. The reason why you wanna use the cleaver because it has a lot of weight. You see how thick that is? It has a lot of weight, so mm -hmm. it chops things a lot easier. We have our consomme here. Well, this is the perfect consistency of our consomme. And we want to keep this. Do not throw this out because that is great dipping sauce. It is the most flavorful thing yeah. you will ever taste. But if you need to thin it out, maybe you, you forgot it was in the oven or whatever like that. A little bit of water, you're good to go. John, yes. I'm going to try your media and I'm going to judge you harshly on it. I hope so. I want you to talk the most shit to me. Yes, tell me how great I am. Mm. Oh my God, dude. I want to talk shit so bad. 
<laughs> but I can't think of <laughs> mm. Now we have our griddle here. You can do this just in a cast iron pan or whatever you want, but we have a griddle here turned all the way up to 400 degrees because this is what we are going to make our tacos on. So now we have our meat. We have just some red onions and cilantro. There is no um, real ratio. It depends on do you want to eat soap or not. So we have this going. And then also we have some Oaxaca cheese. Mm -hmm. If you don't have access to Oaxaca cheese, you can do Monterey Jack. No. Which I think, what, what, that's supposed to be like the mid, mid American like. Yeah, it's mid all right. Yeah, it's super mid. But Oaxaca cheese, if you can get it, if not, Monterey Jack is supposed to be the substitute. So we're gonna take our tortillas, dip them in. Dip them in. As soon as we do that, this is at a high temperature. Mm -hmm. Take our Oaxacan cheese, just on one side. Cheese it up. Just on one side because we are going to flip these over and this is going to happen very, very, very fast. We'll take our meat. Mm. Oh man, that's so good. We're really just waiting for the shells to crisp up. We'll also the meat to uh, and the cheese to warm up. This fool just said shells. Yeah, right. I'm just going to... There you go, there you go. And if everything comes out, it's fine. But press it. Mm -hmm. It's where a good weighted spatula comes into play. Same thing for here. Some things may come out. Oop, 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 oop. You know what, that's what therapy's for. And then once you feel like the cheese is starting to melt, mm -hmm. which was what's gonna hold it together, turn it over. And you want it to get a little crispy because you're gonna, it's basically like we said, it's the Mexican French dip. And while those are finishing up, consomme. All it really is is just this leftover liquid. We're gonna ladle it into here. That means bowl. Yep, bowl. I have that there. And then just some onions and cilantro. That means onions and cilantro. <laughs> and then just some lime juice into it. Limon. You ready? Dip it in. We're gonna toast. Yeah. In there? Yep, yep. Okay. Toast? Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. I'm hesitant. This means a lot. Los Angeles native. I think this might be the best video tacos I've had yeah, in a really long time. I'm about to renounce my citizenship. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that. I think you just become a Raiders fan. That's good. That's the recipe. Mm. If Armando says it's good, and he's a great critic of Mexican food, then yes, this is the recipe to go. It's so good. And might I recommend the best way to pair this is with like half a bottle of 1800. <laughs> oh, hey Armando, what are you doing with your Saturday? You wanna come over? It's gonna be like a super chill time. Do y'all remember where this 1800 was? Yeah, it was started? full. This is what happens when you come on my show. Maybe we're biased. No. Nope. We might be a little biased. Is it cool if I crash here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, that's Poor Choices Kitchen. This has been video. And uh, yeah, you absolutely have to make this for the rest of your taco nights.